from Russellville. Go ahead, Bill. Hi, Madison. How are you? Hello. I'm wonderful. Um, so, I, the first caller touched early on about your experience on TV this summer, um, and I was just wondering, like, if you had any thoughts about trying to mix things up, just so you know, maybe presenting something different to. ROH this time around, or if fans that watched you on Impact and WWE might see something new with this current run uh, in Women of Honor? Yeah, short answer is yes. <laughs> um, one of the factors in trying to figure out where home was going to be for me after this crazy summer was um, which place, which company, which locker room is going to push me outside of my comfort zone. And I go back to, um, I've referenced several times, um, the feuds that I've had with both Nikki James and Gail Kim throughout the years, every single one of those matches throughout both of those storylines uh, pushed me outside of my comfort zone in the ring and forced me to either go back and remember things that I, I used to do um, in, in the first years of my career or completely reinvent myself and reinvent my moveset. set. And I feel like with Ring of Honor, with Women of Honor, it's a combination of new opponents because I spent so much time at Impact Wrestling. And again, I, I can't um, thank everyone who was a part of my career um, at Impact enough. But I, I was with the same circle of women, um, you know, with a few interchangeable pieces for many, many years. So now that I'm with a new locker room um, full of talented women, and there's, I always feel like there's this, this high energy and this level of expectation with Ring of Honor fans, um, and I never want to disappoint them because I feel that they're very quick to let me know if I do. <laughs> um, so that's all exciting for me. This many years into my career, the fact that I can be reinvigorated and re-excited um, with a new platform, with a new locker room, and with a new company, um, it, it excites me, but that's, that's what I uh, meant when I said earlier that it makes me nervous um, because it's going to continue, at least for this next year, uh, to force me out of my comfort zone and to learn new things and try new things um, if I'm going to hang with these girls in Women of Honor. Thank you. All right, thanks, Bill. Uh, Carlos Toro from Whitepool.com. Go ahead, Carlos. Uh, hi, uh, Madison. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. Uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned finding a locker room that kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone, and the women of the roster being, you know, as good as it is right now. Now that you signed with Ring of Honor, what are your goals uh, for the company? Well, again, a, a short answer to that question is um, I, I want to be Women of Honor champion. I want to um, be the one carrying the flag for this division. And I know that for certain, um, first and foremost, was um, from my experience being part of the tournament to crown the first Women of Honor champion. Obviously, that didn't work out the way that um, I would have hoped or planned for it to. I went out in the first round. Um, but then later in the summer, having the opportunity to challenge for the Women of Honor championship. And I would like to think that um, Sumi and I took each other to our limits. Um, and, you know, it was just a reminder of how hungry everyone in this division is um, and how much everyone wants to see it succeed, and I have no doubt that it will, um, and I want to be the figurehead for that. I want to be the one who, when people look back on um, most successful Women of Honor champions of all time, I, I definitely want to be the one. I want to be the, the uh, one who sets the standards, um, and, and Sumi set it incredibly high, and I don't know who's going to walk out of Vegas as Women of Honor champion, but I know that regardless, whether it's Sumi or whether we have a new champion in Tennille, that bar is going to continue to be high, um, and I want to be the one that, that comes in and sets it higher.